Welcome to a Programming Languages virtual meetup post recording for the fourth meeting of covering the book from mathematics to generic programming. In this brief recap, we are going to be covering chapter 5 and 13 at a very high level and then watching Stepanov talk about the mathematician Euler. This is the table of contents, and after the third meeting, this was the summary of everything we have covered so far. We left off at chapter three, and in meeting number four, we covered chapter five and chapter 13. Chapter five is the emergence of modern number theory, and chapter 13 is a real-world application, aka the RSA encryption and decryption algorithm. And in chapter five, it is a continuation of what we learned about primes and the sieve of Aristosthenes. It continues to talk about Mersenne primes and Fermat primes. From there goes to Fermat's little theorem and later on in the chapter introduces the generalization of that Euler's theorem. So this is Fermat's little theorem and a couple sub chapters later, it covers the generalization Euler's theorem. Then after chapter five, we skipped to chapter 13, which introduces the RSA encryption algorithm. And in the videos that correspond to this book, AKA the four algorithmic journeys, this is introduced as a capstone project, which we are also going to do over the next couple weeks as we near the end of this book. So hopefully we will have several different languages implementing this encryption algorithm, C++, maybe an array language, maybe others, time will tell. And if you want to visit the GitHub repository where people will be posting their solutions to that and other exercises that are assigned during the coverage of this book, there is a link in the description. With that out of the way, we are now going to hear from Stepanov on one of the most brilliant mathematicians of all time, Leonard Euler. Okay, guys, I need to here come to my great compatriot, Leonard Euler. And I have to talk about Euler because there are very few people as great as that, if any. In some sense, one of the most remarkable people in history of science. Pronounced Euler, not Eula. Never say Eula. And uh, sort of there is a quote that, uh, from Laplace which says, he is the teacher of us all. And in some sense, every mathematician, everybody who knows anything about mathematics nowadays has to acknowledge sort of eternal debt of gratitude to Euler. He is one of the most sort of remarkable people who, who, who did just about anything imaginable, uh, was born in Switzerland. Switzerland at that time is a very, very important center of mathematical studies because they have a bunch of brothers called Bernoulli brothers. And these Bernoulli brothers do many great things. I, I wish I could tell you everything about Bernoulli brothers, but the most great thing they do, they teach young Euler. And then they get him a job in St. Petersburg. In 1730, this young student so he's 23 years old, younger than Ryan. He goes to St. Petersburg. He thinks that they, he will teach geography there. But somehow, by the time he arrives, it takes several months, great adventures. Uh, he arrives there, and lo and behold, they appoint him to do research in mathematics. So he spends... Uh, 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 10 years in St. Petersburg, goes to Berlin because at that time everybody wants to have him and Friedrich the second Friedrich the Great of Prussia really wants to get him to Berlin. He gets him to Berlin and then of course all the courts in Europe start doing all kind of secret mission stuff. Get Euler. This is pretty amazing. I mean, the French ambassador to Berlin has his one, number one agenda, getting Euler. And so does Russian ambassador. So they all sort of come up with different sort of plans of how to do it. And eventually, sort of, Euler be becomes annoyed with Friedrich, who is a libertine sort of king, 
and goes back to St. Petersburg and spends the last 20 years of his life in St. Petersburg, uh, sort of going blind but still producing enormous scientific output. After he dies in 1783, it takes Imperial Russian Academy of Science 60 years to publish all the papers he submitted for publication because they, he submitted that much. So they, they were publishing and publishing and publishing. 60 years. Right? His collected works are over 80 volumes. A amazing amount of stuff. I believe, you know, Paul knows I always say that there are some treasures in his work which we haven't found because there's just so much. He writes books on all kinds of subjects. I mean, one, the second greatest book in history of mathematics, the first greatest book, of course, is Euclid, is his introduction to analysis of the infinite. A remarkable book, but he also writes a great book on differential uh, uh, calculus, which is way above and beyond anything you ever heard, and uh, three volumes of integral calculus, which is effectively calculus of variations, and plus whatever, eight more volumes of stuff. Amazing amount of work. He works on mechanics. He works on shipbuilding. He works on ballistics. He works on everything. Extremely kind and wonderful person. Any young budding mathematician everywhere in Europe writes him a letter. He would answer, encourage, and suggest sometimes literally giving away his proofs. Okay? So if a person clearly of a saintly disposition, so much so that a Lutheran church, I don't know my, whether my Lutheran friends know that, but Lutheran church makes him a saint and celebrates his day on May of 24th. You know, sort of, they have Euler as one of their saints. It's not bad. I mean, you know, I'm always tempted to, be, to become a Lutheran with Bach and Euler. It's not bad, you know, it's not bad. So, uh, so in any case, a very, very great man. And among many other things, he encounters work of Fermat. He buys this publication of Boucher's, uh, you know, remember the Sun publishes. And he goes through all the conjectures and start proving them one by one by one by one by one. Sort of by the end of the, his life, he effectively proves all but one. That's why the last one is called the last Fermat theorem. That's the one Euler couldn't quite prove. But he invents an enormous amount of stuff. He sort of is just, you know, there is a book recently published, which, you know, you might want to take a look, short little book called Euler, the Master of Us All, which attempts to give this sort of his breadth. But it falls very short of of, of reality, the man of, we have to, we have to know about him. We have to venerate him, not, even if we are not Lutherans. At Lutherans in particular. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for future videos. And links to all of my socials and podcasts are in the description down below.